Good evening, I'm Pastor David LaFour and welcome to Increase Decrease. And today we come to the end of the season of Lent, which culminates in this Friday service, what we call Good Friday, the day of Jesus Christ, our Lord's bitter sufferings and betrayal and death. It's a somber service, and as we go through it, I want us to look through the eyes of John, who's not just an apostle, not just a disciple, but a person who is a friend of Jesus. As he records for us, his brothers in the faith, years and years later on, the the events of that day that changed history and your life forever. Today, as we go through Good Friday, and we, we've capstoned this Lenten season, I think there's just a few things to think about. One is the depth and the cost of our sin. As we go through Lent, we're supposed to reflect upon how we have fallen short of the glory of God. And that reflection makes the cost that Jesus Christ pays on the cross uh, much more present in our minds. And we also need to look at the character of Jesus. How, even though we often fail as humans in our obedience to God, our obedience here on earth and our love for one another, this Lenten season, and especially Good Friday, shows the obedience of Jesus Christ to his Father and the depth of his love for you and I. And so today is a somber service, and today is about the death of our Savior, our God, and our our friend who loves us so very much. But today is also, this death is is a stepping stone to that awesome and wonderful day of resurrection, which we will celebrate soon. But for today, we we step into the harder part, the, uh, the, 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 the death and the sufferings of our beloved Savior. For this opening prayer, I want to read from Psalm 22. I'll actually read the entirety of the psalm. And you may recognize it from the first lines. This is the psalm that Jesus was praying as he was dying on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And your father, and our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were, they were rescued. In you they trusted and they were not put to shame. But I am a worm, I am not a man. Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like the pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and glow over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. 
For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who cannot keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Here ends our prayer. first reading for today comes from John chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kindron, where there was a garden in which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priest and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have not lost one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given to me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to a servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I've spoke openly to the world. 
I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard of me in in what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Anna sent them bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once a rooster crowed. Our second reading for this Good Friday comes from John chapter 18 and John chapter 19. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered him, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. 
And Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the son of God. When Pilate had heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. And so when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and he sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover, and it was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king! And they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. third and final reading comes from John chapter 19. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. And Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of these Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, They took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier and also for his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. And so they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. 
So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sisters, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And they said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that it was all finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. And a jar full of sour wine stood there. And so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and they held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. And since it was a day of the preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he's telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him who they have pierced. And after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. And so he came and took away his body. And Nicodemus also, who had earlier come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. And so they took the body of Jesus and they bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in a place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. As we close out our service, I have one more short prayer to offer up before our God, and then I will commence with the slamming of the book. And for those of you who maybe don't recognize this tradition, who who knows uh, the background of the Good Friday services you have seen, The slamming of the book represents the shutting of the tomb, the finality of what Jesus Christ has done. Would you join me now as I go to the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, You willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross and so remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sins and the redemption from everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here.